Let's try an example now where I'm going to give you the first few terms, and let's see if we can find a pattern. See if we can find a pattern. So here's one. How about I tell you that a1 is 5, a2 is 10, and a3 is 15. Can we guess a pattern? Can we guess a general formula? Well, it seems like these are just the multiples of 5. And so a good guess might be a general formula, a sub n, would just be 5 times n. And let's check it. If n equals 1, I get 5. If n equals 2, I get 5 times 2, which is 10. If n equals 3, then I have 5 times 3, which is 15. So if you see the first few terms of a sequence, we can actually try to produce a general formula that will give us the sequence for any n, for any n. How about this one here? 1 half is the first term, so that's a1. a2 equals 2 thirds. a3 equals 3 fourths. a4 equals 4 fifths. Can we see a pattern here? Well, let's see. It seems that the tops are just being increased by 1, and the bottoms are also being increased by 1. And so what would be a general formula? a sub n equals, well, the top always seems to be the same as the index. I have a sub 1 here, and there's a 1. Subscript 2, and I have a 2. Subscript 3, and I have a 3. So it looks like if I have a subscript n, I should put an n here. And on the bottom, I just have one more than the top. So that would be n plus 1. And that's how I'd write this, what really is a function, but I'm now thinking about it as a sequence. Because I'm only going to let n be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all the way down the line. So now we see a general formulation for the beginning part of this sequence. Anyway, this is sort of the, the idea of sequences. And the notation is a little bit new and different. It takes us a while to adjust to it. But once we think about it as a list of numbers in a particular order, we're going to be home free. I'll see you up at the next lecture.